With gaming in its current stale state, I've spent a lot less time streaming and a lot more time making the space in which I stream a lot nicer. I've been cleaning up and I have my 2016 MacBook Pro that I've offloaded terabytes of footage through for film and TV shows that I've worked on. If you'll notice behind me, there's a window. The window has a blackout curtain on it and this is a perfect empty space. What could we put there? Why not a projector? So here was my idea. I could use a projector to map fake window POVs onto the wall. I've seen them on TikTok, I've seen them on YouTube, and my theory was this. If I connect this projector to my MacBook, it will be viewed as a monitor. In OBS, if you right click the canvas and select full screen projector preview, you can select the monitor to which you want to project the preview or your canvas in OBS. You can select the projector and then your OBS canvas will only be broadcast to that other monitor. In this case, it is an actual projector. So before we get started, we'll show it off a little bit in two important notes. First, my streaming room with all the lights off is pretty much a cave, even during the day. So if you can keep most of the light, both from outside and from inside from your light sources, off the surface that you're gonna project on, the projector will seem way brighter. The second point is that the camera I'm using, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, is a very nice camera. And it's able in this log mode to pick up a lot of nuanced exposure and color detail, which I'm then able to tweak later. This really helps the projector sell as a bright source. So if you're using a webcam, like a C920, it may not look quite as crisp. My first step was installing OBS on the MacBook. I then scoured YouTube for a bunch of cool backdrops that I found that were long and loops and downloaded them onto the MacBook. All of the clips that I downloaded were added as sources to a singular scene as media sources in OBS. My projector's clamped to the lamp and mounted on its side. So all of the clips that I brought in, I would rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise so it appeared vertical on the projector. And I made sure that the bottom edge of the image from the projector was flush with the bottom of the window and that limited how much transforming I needed to do to use some black wrap, which we use in the film industry to wrap lights all the time and some fake plants to kind of hide the projector. Uh, it's right here, I'll zoom in in the edit and show you guys, but you can't really see it in my face cam. And I really wanted that because I think it sells the illusion. Like, where is this coming from? Now talking about the projector, I started with an $80 one I found on Amazon. There was a coupon attached to it, made it 60 bucks. So I figured why not? It was rated at 9,500 lumens. All of the lumen ratings listed on Amazon for any of these rebranded cheap projectors are not gonna be trustworthy. You're gonna have to look at Amazon Amazon customer reviews and see if someone's taken a photo associated with that item and it looks bright enough. I got really lucky with the second one that I tried, which is the one installed here. So I returned the first one and now I'm using this one. I'll link it below in the description. Once again, if you right click the canvas and go to full screen projector preview, you can select the monitor to which you want to send OBS's full screen preview. You, it can either be the monitor that you're working on or another monitor connected. In my case, it was the projector. This allows OBS's canvas to be sent to a monitor full screen. There, I can crop and transform the source so that it fits on my window. This worked great. And with the addition of the StreamFX plugin, which is available online for free, there's an added filter in there called 3D Transform. Using the crop and pad filter, I'm able to crop down large 1920 by 1080 videos into something that will fit on the window. 3D Transform allows you to do just that. It allows you to transform a layer in 3D space. So with this, we're able to tweak and morph the image so that it fits onto the window. So I stood at my laptop and I tweaked all of the different roll and pitch and yaw parameters as well as scale and shear until the image that I saw on the window matched what looked believable on my camera. The final filter I put on all of the media sources for the videos projected on the window is a color correction filter. It's color grading specifically from the StreamFX plugin suite. What it allows me to do is tweak some of the softer and more pastel videos that I'm playing to something that again, is gonna be more visible on camera. While it might not look great to the eye, adding contrast, lifting the gamma, lifting the gain is going to make bright images of the image look brighter and is gonna add contrast to where you need it so that it really sells on camera. As far as adding alerts to the window, I measured the space between the black strips on the curtain 
and I got the aspect ratio. I made a project in After Effects with the same aspect ratio, but the height is 1920. I'm a nerd, I know. I designed some really quick animations in there, and then I exported that as a WebM, and that is a browser source on the MacBook there. When an alert is triggered, I'll get my usual alert on the streaming PC, but also the browser source on the MacBook will trigger the animation that I've made for it, covering the video for a moment and filling the room with light, which is a really nice and fun interactive way to add something to your stream. I have stream elements open so I can simulate all of the chat events that would happen like follows, gifteds, donos, bits, raids, and I can show you what the alert looks like on my main face cam as well as in the window. We'll start first with a follower alert. This is simulated in the stream elements. You can see the main one above me as well as the window effect there. For every one of these chat events, there will be an effect on the stream as well as something in the window. Next is the subscriber alert. We have the large gifted alert. All these sounds for these alerts I found on freesound.org, by the way. There is also the dono alert. There is the bits alert. And since Twitch did away with hosting, here is the raid alert. Probably my favorite part of the whole setup is how I control the different videos playing on the projector behind me. Now, you can do this really easily with a Stream Deck. I've installed the OBS Bar Raider tools. The OBS Bar Raider tool lets you connect to an instance of OBS via WebSocket. Why is this important? Well, I can get the connection info for that computer running WebSocket on that OBS and input it in these panels I'll show here so that I can control the scene and sources for that IP of that computer through WebSocket on the Stream Deck connected to my streaming PC. I've gone through and added cute little GIFs to each button so that I have a mental note of what each video is. If I press the button, it turns the video on. Pressing it again turns the video off. In the future, I hope to add a way that people can use channel point redemptions in my Twitch chat to change the scene behind me. I hope you found this interesting. I was super excited about this project and I'm still probably gonna find ways to add and change this and add more videos and like I said, add chat control. If you wanna see more videos like this, if you wanna see basic OBS tips, let me know in the comments below. Like the video, it really helps us out. Subscribe and click the bell so you know when I upload another one. And until the next video, y'all, I'll see you later. Peace.